Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. I want to talk about AMD's new 3D vCache processors. And where the 3D comes from and vCache is the amount of cache that is on the processor die itself. And what cache is, is really fast memory, again, that is on the die with the processor. And these chips, the reason for 3D in the name is Processor dies are, are meant to be kept really small. The smaller and tighter packed you can keep it, the better. But what AMD has done is they've stacked the cache vertically, and that's where the 3D comes from. At least that's my understanding of where it comes from. Um, and they have about three times the amount of cache on them, these chips do, than a i9, a corresponding i9 from the same generation. And so what that means is for gaming, and that's why these were created, Anytime you're looking for a piece of data or instruction, if that can be found in cache, as opposed to having to go out into system memory or the hard drive, that is much, much faster because again, that memory is on the die with the chip. And of course, with three times the amount of, of cache, you're three times more likely to find what you need in L3 cache. And that's where these get the advantage. And overall, these are about 10% faster than the corresponding i9, if I may have already said that. Um, so what's the difference between these chips? So the bottom line is all three of these are going to be the same speed in gaming. And of course, we're speaking in generalities. Sure, you might find slight variances here between one and the other. But in general, you should think of these as equal in gaming uh, to each other. So how are they different? Well, this is how they're different. This has eight cores. This has 12 cores. Let me just erase this for a second. And this has 16 cores. Now, the reason they're equal in gaming is, first of all, gaming doesn't need that many cores, first of all. Secondly, uh, this is some terminology I've kind of made up, but there, this one has eight gaming cores. This one has eight gaming cores plus four productivity cores. And this has eight gaming cores plus uh, eight productivity cores. Now, how am I differentiating this? Well, essentially, the eight gaming cores, which I'll underline on all these, have access to that large amount of L3 cache. And those, that's where all your gaming is going to run. So no matter which one of these chips you're using, when you're gaming, you're all three running off the same eight cores, which have access to that 3D V cache. And that's why they all game essentially at the same speed. Now, why would you want this one and this one over this one? Well, if you'd also do productivity work on your machine, so if you do video editing, 3D rendering, modeling, scientific computing, you know, things like that, then that's where you get the benefit by looking at these chips. If you don't do any of that stuff, if all you do is gaming or simming, you're better off with this one. And what's the thing I like about this chip too is this can be cooled with conventional air cooling, a decent tower air cooler can keep this cool because it's only eight cores and it doesn't draw a ton of power. One thing that these, this 3D vCache is very sensitive to is high power, high voltage. And that's why these cores, these gaming cores actually run at a slower speed. The max turbo on these gaming cores off the top of my head, I believe is five gigahertz. And on the productivity cores, you can get up to around 5.7. But, they, but again, the productivity cores sacrifice the access to large amounts of cash. They still have a little bit of cash, but they don't have that large amount of cash. And for gaming, you're better off with a slightly slower clock speed and large amounts of L3 cash. And in productivity work, you're better off with the higher clock speed and a smaller amount of cash. So if you're doing gaming and productivity, that's why this gives you the best of both worlds. Again, if all you're doing is simming, and all you're doing is gaming, then this is really all that you need. Uh, overall, again, these are about 10% faster than Intel's fastest. As of right now, April about 23rd, I think is what today is, of 2023. And um, roughly, you know, this is a little bit less expensive. Um, this is about the same price as the Intel i9. Um, so the, really the only advantage the i9 has is you could run DDR4 on it, but, um, you know, like if you already had some DDR4, but really um, these are uh, a great option. So that's the differences. 
that's what makes them good. And that was why maybe you'd choose one of the more expensive ones over the uh, entry level one.